Greetings, fellow Empyreans. It is May 21st, YT126, and this is the Eve Universe Show. Like the stream if you like this shot. Uh, I did spend some time, as I usually do, finding a good shot to look at while we uh, while we wait for the stream to start. This is the Sisters of Eve Epic Arc starting station of Arnon. Uh, just thought it'd be a cool little shot. Uh, we have news though. We have a lot of good news. We have, we have, uh, I, my entire stream got changed. I made the thumbnail for the stream and then before I could upload it, they changed the entire topic of the stream today. We did get the dev blog about the Skinner system. So we will be looking at that as well as, um, some other things. And if we have time left over, then we will continue with the SOE Epic arc from last time. So, um, but... Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the news. Oh, yeah, make sure to like this channel, like the stream, subscribe. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you to all my supporters, etc., etc. All of the stuff I'm supposed to do at the beginning of this stream. How you guys doing? I've completely forgotten how to run these streams. I just want to talk about stuff. Can we just talk about stuff? I just want to talk about stuff. So let's go ahead and start talking about... First Strike. First Strike Vanguard playtest, the final, the final, <laughs> thank you very much, Fred. The final playtest for this phase of Vanguard is this weekend, guys. So this weekend is the First Strike playtest on the 23rd through the 27th. Uh, the ne next monthly deployment of War Clones is almost here, and the Legions of Vanguard will soon be let loose for another trial of ground combat as previous First Strike events. This playtest is open to all Omegas as part of Founders Access. This will be a last chance to play the current map for a while, as the new one is coming in June. Okay, so they're going to stop using this map to start using the new map in June. That's actually kind of disappointing. I'd like to see it where it's like a bit of a mix-up. Like, so you have both, but whatever. So jump in and conquer it during the May event while the opportunity exists. The next first strike event takes place between the 12 UTC on the 23rd of May and 12 UTC on the 27th of May. Evangar is a uniquely collaborative effort. Our founders being instrumental, blah, blah, blah. How to become a member. Okay, so you have to have Omega status on the weekend that they do, that they have the game, um, just like always. And just like always, they have actually added in a War Clone Omega bundle. So for $10, you get 14 days of Omega and uh, the Naglfar skin, right? However, if you don't want to do that, uh, you can always go in-game to the Nest store. And here is the uh, War Clone Omega gun bundle in-game for 250 plex. So basically, for half the price of uh, a normal Omega month, you get 14 days, which is, of course, one less than half. Um, but you also get this awesome Arcumbine Horizon uh, Arisen Nagalfar Fleet Issue skin. So cool, 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 cool. There's that. Uh, as Vanguard, you will be have an impact on the ongoing war in New Eden and rewarded for your contributions. As in previous First Strike events, there are exciting challenges to face. War clones will receive the burst Arcumbine Arisen skin for acquiring 10 clones, exchanging biomass for additional clones at recloning stations. This challenge can be achieved by individuals or squad members, but as all clones required in a squad counts towards the progress for all of all members, it will be significantly easier to achieve with others. So for those of you who have not done uh, Vanguard yet, basically every NPC or player, every kill that you get, every person who dies on their corpse will be some biomass. And when you collect, I think it's 20 biomass. And when you collect, uh, you can use that biomass to heal yourself. Or if you get enough of it, you can then turn it into a clone bank in order to get an extra life. So that way, if anybody on your squad dies, they can reclone back in. Okay, so it's a big piece of like the long-term like squad-based uh, play of the Vanguard fights. And so I see this as being relatively easy to get for anybody who's playing it for a while right or for for any length of time right like uh, five or six games uh semi successful you should be able to start um knocking out these we we very often in our group um were maxing out our clones and then you will receive a scythe fleet issue our combined arisen skin for individually harvesting 750 units of alloy and 250 units of reactive alloy this i like a lot less this is the exact thing that was bothering me the last time i think it's less than last time Oh, now I want to know. Hold on. 
Yeah, 2,000 units of ore. So previously it was 2,000 units of ore total, but like there's no counter in game at all for it. So now the requirement is much lower. If you remember correctly, when they did uh, when they did this May playtest, March playtest, when they did the March playtest, so few people got the 2,000 units of ore that they retroactively went back and cut the requirement in half to get the Osprey Navy issue. Um, so in the same way, like this is 750 units and 250 units. So it's the same amount of ore as what eventually became the requirement for March. So this isn't great as far as I'm concerned, just because it's going to be so hard to keep track of whether or not you've mined enough. Um, but whatever. Uh, at least we now have a little bit more information. I assume that by individually harvesting, we mean picking up, not shooting the laser, because like you don't actually know what alloy it is until you pick it up. Uh, so yeah. And then reaching the top 10 of the contracts completed leaderboard will reward you with wealth of plex, same as always. And then finishing the challenge of acquiring 10 clones will contribute to the reward track that has been ongoing since the December event. With those who finish, four of our six challenges receiving a sleek new Eating Calm gun skin. As these new cosmetic updates make their first appearances in the next major update for Evangard coming in June. So remember, in June, we're also getting a lot more ship, or not ship, but loadout customization, weapon customization, um, and whatnot. And it appears that skins are part of that. So here is the new Eating Calm gun. But... Uh, while it doesn't say it in the mail, it does say in, sorry, it doesn't say it in the dev blog. There was an email that was put, put out to everyone, uh, involving Vanguard that showed off another new gun, which is for anybody who played in the December playtest, which was the first playtest last year. Uh, if you played then, um, then you get this Arkhambine Arisen or Arkhambine skin for the rifle. And uh, otherwise, this is the new default skin for the rifle. Um, now, I think that this is the original rifle. I don't know if there's still going to be another weapon that's added. or. And uh, while it does look like they're different, if you look at the details very closely, these are, in fact, just skins. You see the same little bars here, the little boxes up there, and the lines there, and the boxes there. And you can see that they're, both, they're present both here and on the eating com one so these are three skins for the same gun but um yeah so this is the last one on the old map with the one gun and all that kind of stuff it's going to be the same basic uh setup as last time uh but this time we get the burst and the scythe fleet issue and it starts out on uh the 23rd right yeah the 23rd so that's it for vanguard um I guess, let me know if you're interested in Vanguard, if you're going to be doing Vanguard, what your thoughts of previous playtests are. You know, go ahead and let me know all that stuff down below. Um, I love to hear what people think about this stuff because that informs what I talk about, right? And how I talk about it. You know, obviously I have my own opinions, but I always, if, if you have a difference in my opinion, you can come and talk to me about it and you can tell me how you feel about it and I will listen to you and I will say at least I know some people who say this. Right. You'll hear me say that all the time. I'll be like, well, I know people that do da, 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 da. It's because people talk to me about this stuff. So I'm interested in hearing your reasoning. Are you enjoying it? Are you not enjoying it? What do you like? What do you not like? And why? All right. So next. Uh, I, I do want to talk before we jump too big into the main topic of the day. I do want to talk about uh, a little bit of a PSA. This was on Reddit. I can't remember who originally posted it on Reddit right off the top of my head. But uh, they were posting about the fact that there are honeypot structures in high sec. So this is something to keep an eye out for anyone who is doing stuff in, in, in structures in high sec. Uh, but here is a good example of this. Okay, so this is the corp Eros Ho, right? Uh, and this this group seems to be missing losing a lot of structures, um, and they're kind of losing all of those structures to the same people well if you dig into this you can see that it's very very almost certainly likely that the owner of these structures are the same people that are killing the structures 
So what's happening here? Well, uh, the thing is, is that asset safety stops if a structure is abandoned. If all of its um, services are shut off for seven days, at the end of that seven days, the structure becomes abandoned and all asset safety is shut off, which means that uh, anything that's inside of it, rather than going into asset safety, as many people would expect, it instead drops into a can around this, the wreck of the structure when the structure is destroyed. So um, what we see here is a group that is anchoring structures in high sec, making them free port, waiting some time, and then basically pull, pulling the fuel and blowing up their own structure, uh, allowing them to loot anything that was left inside by anybody who left stuff there and then forgot to get it and didn't get the notification that was about to go abandoned. So it's a pretty scummy thing to do, but it's absolutely an Eve thing to do. This is, don't complain about it. Don't, don't, don't. It's not a bug. It's not a, a mistake. This is the risk that you take when you operate in player structures. So just remember, do not store your stuff in player structures if you're going away from the game long term, because you may be only given 48 hours worth of warning to get stuff out. And uh, do not leave things in player structures uh, that you don't have control over in some way, shape, or form. Uh, or at least if you do, it's at your own risk. Just realize that it is at your own risk and be careful about it, right? NPC structures are, as of right now, completely safe, but player structures are absolutely at the discretion of the player group owning it. So uh, be advised, beware, and don't be, don't fall into this trap. I tend to not use player structures anymore since the clones and station changes were made. Yeah, that's true. Uh, things in asset safety are not in structures. First of all, if you got them into asset safety in nullsec, they're probably now in low sec. Um, and the stuff in asset safety are in structures that cannot be destroyed as of right now. I say as of right now, not that I'm saying thinking that there will be a change to that. That'd be a pretty monumental change. But, you know, I'm not going to say that they'll never do it either. All right, so, but let's get into the big news of the day. Personalized ship skins. Now, as they have with previous expansions, we're doing uh, different focus blogs every week with uh, this week being personalized ship skins. We still have uh, next week, which I think is going to probably be about the Vanguard June playtest. And then the week after, which I, I suspect might be things like the little things or other miscellaneous stuff that's coming with the, the, uh, with the expansion. And then uh, we're done. We're right, right, then it's time for the expansion. So uh, this is the big one for me, at least. Uh, I'm very, very excited about this. Uh, once again, as per most of these dev blogs, most of the good information is in the video itself. So let's go ahead and watch the video first, and then we will pick through it. We'll just watch the video in full. With the Equinox expansion, we're extending the Skinner tool to ships, empowering you to fly your true colors, express your identity, and unleashing your creativity through the design of personalized ship skins. Yeah, I got rid of all of the other news first, Solstice. I, I like to give people time to show up and hang and, and sit in. Yeah, exactly, Solstice. You are the reason why I did that. Specifically. Just you. Thanks, Solstice. Chips, empowering you to fly your true colors, express your identity, and unleashing your creativity through the design of personalized ship skins. Skinner also offers the ability to sequence and activate the skin licenses to adorn your own ships or to strengthen the collective identity of your corporation or fleet. In addition, the enterprising pilot can even turn a profit by selling the skins in the Paragon Hub. Skinner for Ships opens a variety of new career opportunities for capsuleers. You can make a name for yourself as an artist, or you can specialize in creating a cohesive look for your corporation. Skinner also presents opportunities to generate a new income stream by either selling your masterpieces or by specializing in seeking out and selling design elements. Skinner is a robust tool that puts the control in your hands empowers you to tailor your experience to your individual desires, and gives you more diverse ways to express yourself. With design elements being a key part of the design process, a new ecosystem and opportunities for rare and valuable skins are created. 
We are excited to see an explosion of variety in skins as Skinner will truly empower you to craft your unique identity and make each ship a statement of expression. The new Skinner interface introduces a robust palette of design elements required to design the skins. These consist of basic and metallic nano coatings in a variety of colors as well as patterns. Each skin design offers five customization slots, four for nano coatings, and one for patterns. The design studio offers unprecedented customization and creativity as you can move, rotate, and resize the patterns around the hull, and then apply a nano coating or a metallic to it. This lets you create a variety of unique and distinctive designs. Paragon will supply all capsuleers with a starting library of nano coatings and patterns, but more can be acquired through the new Paragon Hub on the market and around New Eden through event rewards, air daily goals, loot, and more. Design elements need to be activated and can either be unlimited or limited use. Some design elements will only be dropped in limited quantities and on limited occasions, which presents opportunities to acquire and sell them, as well as create rare and desirable skins that could fetch a hefty price in the Paragon Hub. You can design for almost any ship in EVE, apart from Tech 3 ships, Special Edition ships, and the capsule. You can save up to five designs at any given time to come back to in sequence later, with the ability to save more designs coming in the future. You can also give your designs a name and add them to a unique skin line. Now that you have created your masterpieces, it's time to see them in action which requires you to sequence the design into a skin license. You can either sequence one skin at a time or in bulk if you have the skills. To sequence skins for all hulls, you need to have Omega clone status, as Alpha clones are limited to sequencing for Alpha pilotable hulls. The best way to think about it is, if you can fly the ship, then you can sequence a skin for it. If a design utilizes unlimited use design elements, you will also need sequence binders to sequence the skin. Paragon provides a certain quantity to get you started, but more can be bought on the market, acquired through events, and as loot. The sequencing cost is based on a tier system, using Plex as the primary currency and is based on the rarity and quantity of design elements used. The sequencing time is influenced by the tier of the skin, as well as your skill level, so you may want to train up those skills. When the skin is ready, it will be added to your collection from the queue. You can then either activate it for your own ship or sell it in the Paragon Hub. The Paragon Hub is an essential part of the Skinner experience, providing a platform where you can showcase your designs or find the ideal look for your fleet. It offers an easy to navigate interface and opportunities for designers to make a name for themselves, not to mention untold riches. Here you can buy design elements and trade skins for either Plex or ISK based on the seller's preference. When listing a skin for sale, you choose the currency and decide the length of listing, which determines the basis for the Skinner service fee and hub listing costs. We're also introducing a new collection to easily maintain an overview of design elements and skins that you own. The collection also features new skin icons, each displaying the ship adorned with the skin, allowing you to fully appreciate your collection. Here you can navigate your collection to seek inspiration for your next designs as you browse your skin elements or seamlessly find the right skin for an upcoming adventure. This is the first iteration of Skinner for Ships. We're very excited to build on it in the upcoming releases and expansions. We already have plans to add a share design functionality, more features tailored towards groups and corporations, as well as adding a ton new design elements and even new categories for them. I think one of the things that players will enjoy the most about this is just being able to create an identity for themselves, create custom uh, ship skins that really empower them to, uh, to show who they are while flying around New Eden. A cool new thing that we're allowing players to do is to sell their own skins for Plex. Uh, it's a great way to make uh, a lot of, lot of money in New Eden and uh, I'm pretty excited about it because hopefully I can make a lot of money as well all right <clears throat> so lots of things to unpack here uh i just want to address a couple of things that are right, uh, said right away uh this sounds like the t1 ship skin market will be worthless i don't know about that and also um there won't be anything preventing people from recreating other people's skins and selling them for cheaper except so the base loadout of materials and stuff yeah obviously but if you, like, they, they're saying that a lot of the design elements have to be gone out and go and get, right? So, 
um, anybody who is trying to, like, if I create something using a design element that other people don't have, then it'd be difficult for people to recreate it. Let's go ahead and dig into the details. Uh, the first major expansion of uh, 2024, June 11th, uh, with the Equinox expansion, the Skinner tool will be extended to ships, empowering your, to fly your true colors. The possibilities are vast, adorning, adorning your own ships, with strengthening collective identity, uh, blah, blah, blah. When Equinox and Skinners for ships launch on 11th of June, there will be a daily login gift for seven days, offering amazing design elements to fuel your creations and sequence binders to help you get started in producing skins. Don't miss the opportunities to get a head start on your uh, taking your EVE experience to a, a new creative level. So, so the first piece of this is that there are these skin binders, right? Sequence binders that are going to be necessary. One of the things that we learned about in this video that wasn't talked about in the previous videos was the idea that like in the previous videos, it made it sound like you could just use your own skin. Um, and then if you wanted to give it to somebody else or sell it, then you would have to sequence it. But it sounds like you will have to sequence it. Like you basically will be able to have full five like setups pre-built and then you have to then sequence those now whether or not you need to sequence each individual skin license or if you just sequence one thing that you can then print out multiple of that's one of the questions i don't really know right now although they did say sequencing in bulk so i don't know how the sequencing in bulk is going to go when it comes to like the cost of things and we'll look at that when we look at the cost of things because there's another piece to this that a lot of people I don't think are necessarily catching, but we'll see. The new Skinner interface introduces a robust palette of design elements for your custom creations. These consist of basic and metallic nano coatings in a wide variety of colors, as well as a selection of overlay patterns. Each skin design consists of five customization slots, four for nano coatings, colors are basically, and one for patterns. Skinner for ships can be found through the Neocom, blah, blah, blah. Unprecedented cu cu customization, able to move, rotate, and resize patterns around the hull. By the way, uh, they didn't really show that very well in this video, but to show it a little bit in this Pulse video, they talked about it. This so you can see as they're, because, because they have it anchored to orbital, as they move the ship, the pattern doesn't move, but the ship does. So they rotate around and the location of the pattern on the ship changes. And then when they click the button, it locks the ship in place and makes it so that they can change the skin. And then they, uh, rotate the skin itself without rotating or like move the skin itself without rotating the ship so that's the kind of customization that we're looking for so you'll be able to move rotate and resize patterns around the hull and apply different colors to separate sections of the ship meaning that the smallest of variations applied through these tools will result in different fascinating outcomes and designs paragon will supply all capsules with a starting library of nano coatings and patterns with more available through the paragon hub on the market and around new eden through events rewards daily goes loot and more so that's a big piece of it right so now as an organization we're going to want to or as an individual either way we're going to want to go after specific missions specific uh, like ch challenges specific events whatever it is so that way we can get our hands on these design elements, right? Like in the same way that you uh, you collected skins before, you now collect the pieces to build whatever skin you want. So that's where it comes in, right? If you get a piece from an event, that means you can, like right now, right? I, I, I do the Capsuleer Day event, right? And I get the Capsuleer Day event skins. And that's cool for me. But now they're going to be like, okay, well, you've completed the track. So you get the new... Uh, you know, the uh, conscious thought decal thing that you can brand onto your ships. So now I can use that on future skins. People that didn't do this event don't get that thing. So they don't get to make skins like that. If you want to get that skin or any skin that uses that design element, you have to get it from somebody or somebody has to sequence it that already has that element. That's a big piece to this whole, like, Oh, well, what if people just recreate it? The track is kind of annoying to finish, not going to lie. Well, I mean, that's a separate issue, I guess. I'm just using it as an example. <laughs> Presenting opportunities for enterprising pilots to acquire and sell them for a healthy profit, profit or uh, create rare or desirable skins that may fetch an even more handsome price on the Paragon Hub. Designs can be given unique names. Using Skinner budding t t uh, designers will be able to craft their own skins for almost any ship in EVE, except for the capsule, Tech 2 3, and Special Edition ships. 
kind of disappointing, but I understand. Uh, Tech 3 is by far the most complicated visually of all of them to operate. It was the last, they were the last ones to get skins. And if you notice, there aren't very many fancy skins for uh, T3 ships. They are a giant pain in the ass to, to work with in the back end when it comes to the design, like the graphics and stuff, because they change. But um, the special edition ship is kind of disappointing. It makes me wonder because like what this means is, I, I think that means things like the Marshall might not be able to get uh, a skin. I imagine that T3 ships will be added eventually once they get it sorted. Uh, but it took over a year, I think, from the first skins. It took multiple years, I'm pretty sure, from the first skinner or skin system to um, when T3 cruisers got it. But um, as I said, up to five designs can be saved at a time for modification or sequencing later with the ability to save more designs coming in the future. This is super pretty, but here is our first clue as to what's going on, okay? I'm going to uh, open it up so that way I can read it a little bit better. So here we see that this color is going into this cur, which is 150. And the pattern is here with an alignment of 1200 and a firm, fermiotic sequencer to add the gold to the item. But the bottom line is that the fermiotic sequencer is 900 sequence binders. The Kerr sequencer is 150 binders. The alignment sequencer is 1,200 binders for a total plex cost of 110 plex. And this is the other piece to this, which is that if I wanted to print these things out, right, do I have to pay 110 ISK, or sorry, 110 Plex every single time, or the binders rather, every single time I want to make one of these skins? Or do I bind it once and then print it out over and over and over again? That's what I don't know yet. But, you know, even trying to recreate the basic skins uh, likely will have some kind of cost to it, depending on what colors you're adding to it or whatever, or what you're doing to it. So it's not like you're going to just be able to create a, uh, a skin and then like that's sold by CCP and then you just get to have it for free, right? Like, so we don't have all of the details and there is a couple of things that are confusing in a few minutes, which is uh, once the design is ready, it must be sequenced into a skin license to be applied to a ship. Each sequence has a certain cost based on a tier system using Plex as the primary currency. The sequence cost is based on the rarity and quantity of design elements used, and the sequencing time is based on the skin tier and skill level. Specific skills will be introduced with the new skill books with Equinox to allow bulk and faster sequencing, so training may be in order. Before design elements can be used... Okay, here we go. This is the part that confuses me. So this is not the sequencer. This is now de design elements, okay? Before design elements can be used in the skinner, they, must, they need to be activated. Some are limited to a certain number of usages while others can be used an unlimited number of times. But keep in mind that sequence binders are required when sequencing skins that, ha uh, that use unlimited design elements. So, what this means is that this design element here, right, the, the, the pattern that's being used, see how it's an infinite use? There's a little infinity symbol next to it? That's why it's taking all these sequence binders, right? So if I go out and I find a mission, like let's say I do a, or not a mission, but like a, let's do an event, you know, or if I do air career paths and I open up a air career box and I get a rare limited use sequence uh, effect, right? So it can only be used 10 times, let's say, right? So now I can make 10 skins with that element in it. And I don't need to use sequencers in order to do it because it's a limited use thing. It's only if the element that's being used has unlimited uses do you require these additional sequencers. Okay? Which, of course, almost all of the base colors are going to have those sequencers. So while it probably won't cost 110 plex because of this has the fancy gold, there will be some cost associated with even the more basic, like, recolors. Uh, in fact, here, oh no, this one has a pattern too. We can see here that the, this has a fermionic sequencer of the, uh, opalescent, like, 
So this has four different skin colors. It has like this shiny purple, the shiny blue, the teal, and the black. The blue, the teal, and the black is all going into the Kerr unit, while the base coat is going into the Fermatic. The base coat is this purple, and it's worth 1,800 binders. These three colors are together are worth 2,700 binders, and this alignment, the alignment for the uh, the um, the effect is 1,200. Which, if you look at this actual skin, like, I don't know what this uh, pattern is doing. I think that they're spending money they don't need to spend here. Oh my god, look at how little it changes. Wait, hold on. And of course, my question still remains, once you're done uh, sequencing, do you end up with a one-time use skin? Or can you make as many copies of that skin now that you've sequenced it? That's the big question for me. How to... Uh, how much to go full matte black everything? I'm not sure. Before design... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sequencing skins for different hulls is linked to clone status, meaning that alpha clones are limited to alpha uh, pilotable hulls, while omegas can sequence for all ships in simpler terms. Well, all ships except for the ones that can't be done. Uh, once the skin is ready, it will be added to a new collection where you can activate it for your own ship or sell it through the Paragon hub. This is one of the things that I am kind of weirded out about because, like... I have a thousand skins based on that, um, like the, the, the browser, like, I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to look through my stuff and find the one I want, but here we go. We see this right here. So this gives us a lot of information, right? So, uh, we have these different brands, right? And they have different symbols on it. Okay. We have two dots here, three dots here, four dots up here, right? And we see that, uh, although at this time, all of them, yeah, so the three dots are worth 35 plex and the two dots are worth 25 plex. Whereas up here, the three dots is worth 15 plex because it's the metallic, the nano coating. So the nano coating is a little bit cheaper than the metallics, but it's 15 plex for a three dot and a 25 plex for a fancy four dot. Okay. Um, and in fact, actually... we go to hobo leaks yeah so when we look at the uh the hobo leaks we see sequence binders standard advanced elite superior stellar and empyrean not sure if this is what's uh based on that and these also could these names could be changed because that could very well be the other binders that we were looking at is it one skin for all ships or a skin for a specific ship that's another one that we're not 100 percent sure i mean like it seems like you're you're sequencing it for a specific ship an integral bar to the Skinner experience is the Paragon Hub providing... Oh, wait, hold on. We were supposed to look closer at this. So we see Argon Heat Gloss, Argon Heat Matte, Argon Heat Skin, or Satin. So Argon Heat, this purple, is a premium high-tier high skin with this Midnight uh, Gloss, Matte, etc. being a lower tier. Now, why do these say three versus... Why do these all say three? Not sure. Um, also, in the bottom, we see 75 plex for this pattern here so here's all of his nano coatings we see phantom rose uh so all the two stars are 10 plex what is this that's a five star is a 35 plex uncompromising scarlet which also uh if you notice all of these other basic ones, hold on. All these other basic ones have matte and satin, uh, or at least many of them do. Dark Abyss, matte, satin. Some of them don't, though. Kali off to dark. Yeah, so this very special crimson one doesn't have, or at least this person doesn't have... Um, Do we have a one dot? Is there anything cheaper? So the two dots are 10. Three dots are 15. Five dots is 35. Do we have any one dots? Do we see anything smaller than two dot? I don't see anything. I think two dot is the smallest so far. Lots of options though. 
The integral part of the Skinner experience is the Paragon Hub, providing platforms to showcase designs and find the ideal look for your fleet. The in interface is easy to navigate, and the Hub provides opportunities for budding designers to make a name for themselves, not to mention untold riches. As well as being a venue to buy design elements, the Paragon Hub allows skin sellers to list their creations for sale and choose either Plex or ISK as their currency, as well as the length of listing, which determines the basis for the Skinner service fee and the uh, Hub listing costs. This is kind of weird. It, like, basically, you could say, okay, well... Uh, wait, does... Is this how... Um... Is this how Hypernet works? Isn't that how Hypernet works, that you could say that you want to cost in Plex? So, you know, obviously, like, there's an exchange rate between Plex and ISK, but this is saying that, like, you can say, okay, well, I will sell this to you for a million, you know, like, 10 million ISK or whatever. Or you could say, I'm going to sell it to you for two Plex. And then the person has to have the Plex in order to do it. You, you, so you can either deal in Plex or you can deal in ISK uh, in order to, uh, you know, trade, buy and sell these skins. And... They say that the basis is Plex, but like I'm not 100% sure if if you have the sequencers, whether or not you still need the Plex. I'm thinking that the Plex is a stand-in for the sequencers. That's the way they kind of stop talk about it, right? That the economics of it is based on Plex. Uh, maybe you could just, I, I imagine you'll be able to just buy sequencers for Plex. So that's where it comes from. So if you need to buy sequencers, you'll just get it with Plex, unless you can get them through Air Career Agents or, or Air Career Path or something. At launch, the Paragon Hub will only contain sequence player-made skins, while Prime CCP-made skins will continue to be available through the New Eden Store and the Eve Store. Prime skins will also feature patterns, effects, and colors that are not available through Skinner, so the increased creative creativity afforded by Skinner will dovetail with the continuing presence of stunning Prime skin offerings in New Eden. So. Skins that you have purchased from CCP are now known as Prime Skins. Um, and those remain exactly the same as they were before. And now you can have player-made sequenced skins as an alternative. So I'm sure some of the uh, uh, like basic Prime Skins, uh, like Rada Sunset, for example, will be pretty easy to recreate in the Skinner system. But others, like Casino Clash, will be impossible. So... Um, I personally will go, I'm going to keep on saying that what I would like to see is as I have my skins unlocked, it also gives me pieces that I can use in Skinner, just so I don't feel like I have, you know, 1100 useless skins now. It'd be nice if I had some co extra colors or, you know, symbols or whatever patterns that I get because I had those skins. It'd be a nice thing, obviously, you know, not necessary or, and it doesn't look like that's what's going to happen, but I am going to ask for it. Uh, it also means that CCP is going to have to up their game on what Prime skins are capable of, obviously. And a lot of that's going to be effects. And that's a big piece of this, because they're saying like, oh yeah, we're going to add different categories of things that you can do. Remember, there's still a whole bunch of things with like holograms and other like particle effects and other effects like that, that they aren't even adding in yet, right? And this is also separate from your decals and other stuff like that that you're getting from Paragon. So, um, you know, on the one hand, this is a huge piece of ship customization. On the other hand, it is just one of the pieces for how we assemble together really cool looking ships in the future. So um, as of right now, it looks like the only real ex additional doodads you add to it is like an extra pattern projected against it as opposed to extra particle effects. Particle effects are historically been like very specific to the ships and have all kinds of little problems. So... I imagine it'll be very challenging for them to just make those available on uh, on the Skinner, but I do hope they do that sooner or later. Uh, a new co a collection interface is also being introduced, which will allow you, giving you a comprehensive overview of the sequence skins and design elements you own. This also features new skin icons, each displaying the skin adorning the blah, blah, blah. We've already looked at that, or we already saw that. Skinner for Ships launches with the Equinox expansion, first iteration, upcoming releases, more features tailored to groups and corporations, as well as many more designed elements and options. 
It'd be really cool if, like, if, if, okay. If we just have to sequence it once and I can make as many copies as I want, then great. If I have to sequence it every single time, what I'd like to see is making an alliance pattern that anyone can sequence, anybody in the alliance can sequence their own copy if they need to. Um, yeah, so, and then tomorrow, no, sorry. T two days from now? Is that right? Thursday, we're going to get a live stream. So after this live stream, we will, of course, have an episode of Eve Universe show, or should. So we'll be going over all of those details to anything that we've learned or whatnot, because we still are speculating quite a bit in this uh, presentation, obviously. This is the... Um, so... I, As a person who's been playing this game for a long time, uh, I appreciate this, but maybe some people won't. But, like, there was once upon a time that the idea of a pink skin was absolutely unheard of in EVE. In fact, people were incredibly hostile to the idea of a pink skin right any pink oh my god my immersion i don't want to see these goofy skins right and the first crack in that armor that no pink in grim dark new eden happened with the rosada dawn skin in 2016 12 years after the game was first released in honor of breast cancer awareness day or breast cancer awareness uh they sold these skins for, uh, sorry, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, um, where 100% of the proceeds went to uh, the Pink Ribbon campaign. And it, that's where all of these skins for these mining ships came from. They're, they're still popular to this day because they're one of the only pink skins in the, sh in the game. And then on top of that, uh, there in 2018, there was the addition of... Where is it? Did I admit? Oh, well, whatever. The Eros Blossom skins were added in 2018. Um, and that added in more purple and such. So, and see, this is saying pink skins are rare. There's actually no pink skins available, which is technically not true because uh, the Rata Sunset or whatever, or not Rata, but you know what I mean. The one we just looked at, um, Rose Roses Rosetta Dawn. Um but, you know, what, what we've seen is, especially after 20, uh, 2021, we've seen a much, uh, a, a pretty big shift in CCP from, or in, like, the management of EVE Online. I like to think that we went from heavy metal to Blade Runner, right? Especially when it's, like, the pulse, like, this, it's all neons, right? Like, this idea of, like, neon became a really big uh, piece of the color palette, uh, palette of EVE Online um, around 2021, 2020, right? So it makes sense that finally, ding dong, the the hatred for the pink is dead. It, it's, it's, it's almost ironic how much they show pink and purple as part of this event or as part of this thing. It's almost like they realize that like that's the biggest thing like that ironically like pink skins have been kind of the totem for this stuff so how long do you think it'll be before they are nagged into releasing cat ears they're already being nagged into releasing cat ears uh yes the heart surge skins are pinkish and heart surge were uh first made available in 2020 so yeah 2020 really and this is actually a good example of that this is where like we start to see ccp go from grim dark to you know neons and shiny right so heart surge is a good example of that so is uh this is the same year i think that um or within the, about the same time that the um halloween horror uh the maligan marshlight skin comes out so uh and and i honestly i think that this makes a lot of sense right i've always hated that like not my eve argument because like this is all about player like expression and your influence on the sandbox and your place in the sandbox and so other people being like no i don't want this in my game because like you're an immortal space pilot flying around in ships that are worth most nations gdp right like 
of course certain people are going to take it completely. You're immortal. You've, you've lost millions of ships. Your reverence for these things can be over, right? Like, there are tons of people that are more, uh, more than desiring the ability to have something flagrantly absurd on their ship because it's flagrantly absurd, right? People want ships, cat, cat ears on their ship. Correct me if I'm wrong. Comment in below if whatever. But for the most part, the whole cat ears on your ship thing isn't because you want cat ears on your ships aesthetically. It's not like that's your favorite thing to have on a ship. It's the fact that you know that it bothers other people and that makes you want it even more, right? That's a big piece of all of this. In the same way that a player can influence another player's game by su suppressing their play style. Oh, I just want to go out and rat. I just want to go out and mine. Oh yeah? Well, I'm going to suicide gank you and now you can't mine, right? So in the same way, you know, you are... You are able to kind of project your presence into the game in, even if it is uh, against the wishes of some of the other, you know, the other people within the sandbox, within reason. And a big reason why people do these things is because they know the impact that they make on the other person. Now, you could call this soci sociopath in space or whatever you want. You know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of negative stuff about that when it comes to Eve. But the point of the matter is, is that like player interaction is a big piece of this, you know, killer. So uh, in Bartle's taxonomy, you have you have explorers, um, uh, achievers, socializers and killers. Right. And of the four killers are about your impact on other people. Right. So what's interesting about that, it's actually kind of a misnamed notion, right? It's this idea that you know the desire to influence another person, to, per, per, to, to project something onto another person. Um, and this can be positive or negative. They're usually called killers because in MMOs, generally speaking, the way you do this is by ganking somebody or killing them in, or, you know, whatever, um, and disrupting their attempts. This is why killers often are in counter to achievers because achievers are trying to do something killers kill them that frustrates the achiever right whereas but i would argue that things like logi is also a form of being a quote-unquote killer because you're influenced like it is all about what you are doing to other people right um as opposed to achievers which are about what you are accomplishing and how your numbers are going up and how you compare to other people explorers being about what you're discovering learning and mastering and uh socializers being interacting with other people um killer or at least that side of things is about influencing other people and i think that the idea of having a flagrantly absurd skin and shining it in everybody's face is absolutely consistent with that so it's always bothered me that that people were able to just confidently say Eve Online doesn't does pink skins doesn't belong in Eve Online. Screw you. Why do you get to say what belongs in Eve Online or not? Right? Like we all contribute to Eve Online. If I want pink skins in the game and I'm willing to put in the plex and the effort in order to get those pink skins in the game, by God, I can put pink skins in the game and there's nothing you can do about it. And that is what Eve is, and I appreciate it. All right, rant off. One thing I do, I am uh, concerned about, though, honestly, one of the things I am kind of concerned about when it comes to this, like, this one looks really clean. Let's be frank. Like, this, like, you may not like the look of it, you know, this Barbie-style Talos, but, like, it's a very clean design. It looks good, right? Um, this, and, and, like, not necessarily that one, but, uh this one do it no like the one they show at the very beginning here like that's just kind of a muddled mess isn't it i i i wonder how many of these things are just going to become this like almost polka dotted or like blah like mess of two colors smashed together that i'm not very happy about i would really like more uh like cleaner um patterns to be used um time to penis time to penis is like negative negative time in fact i could argue that this is this is following under that um 
But yeah, like this this doesn't look that great, right? Like it looks kind of low resolution. I don't know, man. I really hope that we're going to have a lot better options than just this. Um, but, uh, you know, things like this looks clean as hell. I, I am very excited for what people are going to do with the bar gas. Um, and then here you can see, like, there's the stripes here. And they don't show it here, but, like, as we saw in the Pulse video, you know, you can also move the pattern so you'd be able to move the stripes down and up and whatnot but yeah i i don't know i hope that we we're going to be able to get some really good stuff and not just a whole bunch of um you know like i don't want design elements for the sake of design elements but yeah actually so like look at this man like all of these maybe this is just ccp like what does that even look like right like that's kind of a mess, is it? Now, granted, somebody decided to do gold and yellow on yellow, which is whatever. But here we see that there's, like, stripes. There's the camo. There's a different camo. There's the checkerboard. There's the, like, uh, swoop, like a chevron. There's a fresnel or shading or something. But, like, look at this, the second, the third row. The second one down, and the, the first and the second one, like... Are those actually different? Like, functionally speaking? Oh, god damn it. I wouldn't say so. I don't think that I could tell the difference between... Wait, hold on. Wait, what? This shows the modeled effect. Even though it's showing stripes. That's really weird. But yeah, I I just, I hope that we have options for like big, noticeable, clean designs. Not this like modeled uh, muddiness. Middle second down, we'll do fish scales. Oh, I see what you're saying. Like the Chevron one. Could be. Very well could be. They all look like tie-dye shirts. Yeah. I don't necessarily like that part, right? But we're definitely going to see a lot more brighter colors in EVE. That's for sure. That's for dang sure. The other thing is, I wonder how it's going to interact with the actual original pattern of the skin, right? Like, let's... Let me see. hold on a second. If we go here and we look up like the Meku ball, right? So here's my issue. See that modeling right there? Actually, let's look at it from this side. Yeah. Oh no. This is. I don't like this at all. Ready? So, you see this little blob right here? How it goes, like, left and then right. Am I even showing my cursor? I don't... Yes, I am. It goes left, then right, then this big blob down. It almost looks like uh, North America and a little bit of South America, right? In this specific pattern right here. All right. Well, if we go back to the browser, we can see right here on this guy, we see that exact same spot so this spotting isn't uh the pattern this spotting is actually the original like the pattern shows through in the coloration they didn't add a pattern they just changed it to being red and white instead of tan and brown right so that's one piece to it but if we look at this right if i like capsuleer day Okay, that one doesn't do it. That's good. Arkham Binder Risen doesn't do it. Maybe... Oh, yeah. In the Imperian Outlaw one, you can still see 
the pattern in the background, right? In a lot of skins, the original polka dot, or the original like pattern, if if a ship has a pattern, it still like bleeds through. And I wonder how much that's going to influence the the thing. Because there is four colors, right? But like, yeah, you can even see it here. They try to kind of hide it or whatever, but like there's this teal-ish color. It might be hard to see on the video. And then there's the bluish color where you can still see the original pattern on the ship. Yeah, there's another good example. This is actually probably, this is actually a really good example of the kind of skin that we would make, right? It's just a couple of reskins and then like this, uh, or recolors and then like something on the tip of the arms. So, yeah, it'll be, and th but this one doesn't have the pattern. So it'll be weird to see, it'll be interesting to see whether or not you can choose whether or not to show the patterns or not. Right now I'm on, I'm on Tranquility right now. This is all just the current stuff. Um, it is a great ship, but yeah. So things that have its own pattern, right? Like this heart surge has a pattern. The Empyrean Outlaw does not, but um, Angel Hex mostly does. And yeah, there are patterns that can smooth it out. Like if you, if they, oh, you can override the pattern with some skins, but if you don't, then the modeling remains. But yeah. And I don't know, but that might be all we can get out of this for now until tomorrow or Thursday. So we did learn some. We definitely got to look at the options. Uh, now, the relationship with Plex and, Sk and uh, Skinner binders is going to be a big one. Whether or not binding a, sk uh, a skin will allow you to make multiple copies of it, or if you have to pay the Plex every single time. If I get a limited design element and it can only be used 10 times, does that mean I can only make 10 skin licenses total? Because then I won't be able to use that license, that, that design element for like my corporation or whatever. And that would be unfortunate. So, or is it that once I've sequenced it, I can print it out? You know, that's, that's going to be a big piece to this, in my opinion. Because if every single person has to pay 110 plex in order to get our fleet skin, I don't think those fleet skins are going to be nearly as popular, right? Like, it's weird. It's like, oh, yeah, MPSI, here's your uniform. Oh, yeah, you have to buy it, right? Like, that, uh, I don't like it. Uh, but, yeah. And then, of course, finally, will there be good ways of filtering through your skin collection? Because, uh... Some of us have a few. Yeah, here there's only six things shown. I don't see a filter button. Wait, hold on. Is that? Oh, there. yeah, there's a sort and a filter at the top right. There you go. Okay, that's good. So what's your guys' thoughts, man? Is this everything you ever wanted in the Skinner system? Are you uh, going to take advantage of it? Are you going to grab the new skills and become a Skinner master? Or are you going to just wait for other people to come up with something cool? Or do you just not care about skins altogether? Uh, the Convocation of Empyreans will continue to, uh, you know, like, one of the things that I really want to do is start going after these things. You know, if there are tasks and rewards and events that go after these, then, you know, getting these is a fun thing to uh, get involved with. And if you want to get involved with the Convocation of Empyreans, you can on the Discord. Or if you just want to hop into the Discord and check out uh, what we got going on and ask questions, everybody is welcome. We've got public channels and everything. Um, and, of course, if you are relatively new to EVE or returning to EVE and you have not gotten your million free SP, make sure to get your million free SP by using the link down below or in the chat. Uh, it does support the stream. Yes, join us. One of us. Um, eventually, there'll be things for Corpse and Alliances. Yeah, they'll, you'll be able to share a pattern that you're working on, like, before it's been sequenced. But um, that still doesn't, like, answer those key questions about how those are going to be, like, how exactly are we going to mass produce them? I understand that 
if I so if I have a skill that allows you to bulk do it, does that do multiple at the same time, or is that one after the other? Right? Can I queue up it to sequence it ten times? Because if you look here, this says time to sequence. If you look where I'm not showing you, if you look here, it says time to sequence four days for this one. Okay, it's 130 plex four days. This one is 110 plex for two days, 19 hours and 20 minutes. Uh, and it does say skin amount. Okay, hold on. Okay, so yeah, it does say skin amount one, which implies that like you have to pay it for every skin you want to produce of that type. Which that's going to be a little much, probably. But remember, you only have to pay for it if you're going to be using um, one time or like infinite use stuff. So what will probably happen is there'll be a thing that gives you 10 times usage, right? You can use this color 10 times. Um, yeah, you can find sequencers in, in loot. And also they've shown, remember, in the pulse, uh, they show that there is a new air monthly career path. And we see that there's a Skinner component and a Skinner sequencer in the path. So that way an alpha track gets a sequencer and an omega track gets a sequencer and a component, right? Um, so, you know, there will be ways of getting it, but like, that's the thing. So, okay, let's say I get uh, omega red, right? And I want to make my ship with omega red, but the omega red license is only 10. Well, maybe the Omega Red license drops in dens. I'm just making something up off the top of my head, right? Dens and high sec have a chance of dropping this Skinner, uh, Skinner component, right? So now I can farm those up, and every one of them I farm allows me to make 10 copies of that skin, and it doesn't cost anything more because I have the limited use skin. If the skin was an infinite use, then I would have to pay plex or binders every single time I want to turn it into a skin. That's what it appears that they're doing. Hey, look at that video down there. That's a that's a that's a cool video. Um, I'm just glad they're figuring out more ways to fund the game. Actually, well, the funding on Eve is actually pretty solid. But uh, what's interesting about this is that a lot of this isn't. Well, like there is Plex in publishing, but like one of the things that's cool is that we haven't, they haven't really talked about like components or any of that sort of stuff being in like Plex store or whatever, right? A lot of this stuff is designed to get people to go out there and do stuff, uh, which is in a lot of ways, oddly enough, getting people to go out there and do stuff is almost as important to CCP as you paying for something because the game is worth more the more people that are out there and doing stuff and so the people find more value in it and people do spend more money as long as there's more things to do right yeah i'm sure that estimated drops estimel drops a dark metallic orange color that can be sequenced four times i sequence four skins consuming all my uh, all my giga drop the four skins i make are permanent to the buyer and they don't need to uh, buy any additional materials or anything besides the skin. Perfect example. Thank you, Setonia. Okay, so let's say I kill an officer rat and I get this awesome orange metallic color, right? I can use that in a, sh uh, in a skin and that does not require any additional resources to do so. However, if I add other colors and other elements to that thing, then those will cost, right? So, um, clearly Omega Red drops from Russian mutants. It's true. So, so yeah, four copies of that skin, and that's actually a really cool thing because that means that any skin that uses that color is inherently extraordinarily rare, right? Because it can only be gotten by dropping an officer, and even then, you only get to build four copies total. So that red, or that orange, rather, is going to be a very rare color, right? And so you could actually create a skin that is not designed to show, be pretty, 
but it's just designed to show exactly how elitist you are because it has four different colors and a pattern that are all like stupidly rare right like oh yeah i have this skin that you could only get from the this event two years ago and this binder that or this uh this other uh element that can only be gotten by killing officer rats blah 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 will pvp drop skinner stuff if players if they're actively using it oh that's actually kind of cool too killing a person to get their skin uh i doubt it seriously but uh, lore wise is the, uh, there is a real life electromagnetically sensitive material it doesn't even need to be consumable skin just the electromagnetic f frequency tuner for setting that color correct seventh heaven uh this the licensing is 100 percent like arbitrary your your ship is capable of kind of replicating different colors with your super current induced nano coating but the licenses to use it is what's piece to it now how that actually works in mm. Uh, where do you need to wear ugly gear to get the best stats? Yeah, exactly. Like, that skin's hideous. Yeah, but do you know how much I paid for it? Color changing auto pay. I do. I really, really, really want, uh, uh, opalescent skin, uh, paint too in, in Eve. I really like that idea. And in fact, I think that that's kind of what's going on with this skin. That's the metallic part, right? Like, it has a base color of purple, but, like, depending on the angle you see it, it's, like, more blue. And then, uh... Actually, hold on. We can see this. So, the purple's the base part, and then there's little details that are blue. And then the, the stripes are, um, teal. And the other details are black. So, those those four colors. There are blue components. And I don't know what this metallic piece is. Maybe that's... It seems to show that this is the result, but I think that that's just the kind of metallic that it produces, maybe? I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Now I want uh, a sequencer that, like, changes the ship skin based on how much damage I've taken. Or my current DPS is. Same shame all those ships are small and barely visible. What are you talking about? I I like to keep my I bring my camera zoomed in a lot, honestly. And I it's not just aesthetic. I get to see like if you are looking at your ship, you can see visually how many people are shoot hitting you, how many people are shooting you, what's shooting at you. You know, there's a lot of information you can get just by visually looking at things in space. Real life there's a reflex blue, spice, purple, white. But there's also a legit color changing electromagnetically sensitive paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yes, there is like literally you pass an electric current through it and it changes color. That is very cool. And that's basically what we have in Eve. Make sure to like the stream if you've learned something today or enjoyed, enjoyed it all. Uh, comment below with any of the questions that I've asked earlier. Are you going to use this? Uh, are you going to hunt after Skinner license pieces? Uh, and what kind of designs are you going to come up with? And I will, I should see you on Thursday where we will be going over all of the additional details that we'll learn uh, during the stream. Oh, speaking of streams, make sure to be watching YouTube, not wait, YouTube, Twitch right now. The drops are for the Coercer Navy issue, uh, Police Skin. It's pretty cool. And then there's a Mystery Crate after that. You want to stay caught up on those because you have to burn through the original one before you get to the next one. So if you go there and you're earning Evermarks, you may have to finish that before you go on to the uh, Coercer Navy issue. But yeah, every few days they've been putting on a thing on Twitch. So that way it's like four hours of watching a stream. Um, you know, it's got to be the main tab. You can't like tab to a different tab. But as long as it's up, then it counts. And then after four hours, you get your items. Uh, let's see. Anything else? This weekend's Vanguard, guys. So can't wait. Last, last Vanguard before the big changeover. And then, of course, uh, we have, what, less? We got three weeks, I think, until the expansion. So very, very excited. I've been Astrothy. I've been playing this game since 2010, talking about it since 2012, and I'm here to put even to context for you, my fellow Empyreans. Thank you guys so much for coming, hanging out, watching the stream, contributing. The 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 gifted subs are really cool. I appreciate Tranquilla Mare. And uh, who was the mad lad that gifted subs to other people? In the, Bread? I think it was. Yeah, bread. And uh, there was one, I think, 
I think there's at least one other person, but now my thing won't scroll back far enough. Uh, hey man, Solstice, it's all good. It, 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 don't ever be sorry for chatting a lot. That's good stuff. I, I appreciate it. Uh, for some reason, I thought Paragon and Upwell were connected all this time. No, actually, they're they're likely to become uh, rivals in a lot of ways in the long run. So Air, Upwell, and Paragon are all three separate entities. Those are like the three big um, multinational or uh, conglomerates, as it were. But thank you all for coming. Until next time, I've been Ashrathi, the voice of New Eden, and I'll see you in space.